One, two, one, two. Okay, nice. Michael Paul, check. Everything's plugged in, everything's working. One, two, one, two, microphone check. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to another edition of Happy Hour here at King's Pizza. Jessica, what you talking about? Come on in, sit down. Come on, this place racist as fuck. I heard this conversation like, oh, no, everything's real cool in Hawaii. Like, you want to know what? Uh, I just hear stuff for that. I was thinking, of what should I talk about? My name, first, let me allow me to introduce myself. My name is Paco Loco. I'm the producer of tonight's evening. Director, we got a special guest. We got a couple special things today. A lot of stuff been going on in the, in, the, in the day's world. A lot of stuff been going on with us personally. I try to give, I think this guy got the corona. Every time I try to give him a dab, he don't want to touch you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A hey, dog for real. Like, yo, he feeling sick, go home. Now he don't got it. I sprayed him, he good. <laughs> You got the vaccine? You got like extra vaccine, don't you? He got like the 18 vaccine, he good for everything. Like, <laughs> he ready to go to space and Mars. But no, today's we gonna have an open mic comedy, y'all. Uh, we got a whole bunch of comedians that's gonna be coming up. We ask everybody if you can, you can come in, find a seat, because this place is gonna fill up fast. And uh, you don't wanna be outside, can't see shit. So thank y'all for coming. Where y'all from? Y'all from California, y'all visiting? Where? That's a nice. I'm from Philadelphia myself. You like it? You uh? Oh, okay. uh well, he had a question. Was like he wanted. He was thinking about moving here. Y'all were together? Yeah. Y'all together? Kids. Those your kids? Yeah. Y'all thinking about moving here? Y'all can play football? You done with school? Good. Cause in high school, the only way people will like you if you play football. Like it's fucked up here. Like <laughs> for real. <laughs> they do not like you gotta play sports. You gotta be in something. But no, I actually from Philadelphia and I moved here, like, so I can answer a lot of the questions, like, yo, Hawaii, it look expensive, it's expensive, it's fuck here, like, yo, don't buy nothing on Kalakaua, that's not for you, unless you Jay-Z or something, like, you, you know what I mean, you got, like, rich oil money and shit, like, yo, that's Kalakaua, they got, mm -mm, nope, 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 not nothing, not, not even at the ABC store, shit expensive, like, for real, like, $20 for a gallon of milk? Like, for real? Like, damn. Yo, it's just, but it's cool if you know how to shop. And it's cool if you know how to shop. You gotta know, gotta know where to shop. There's Walmarts everywhere, yo. Like, everywhere in America, go to Walmart. Like, I mean, everybody be bragging like, oh, I got everything made in China in my place. Like, everything's authentic from China. I'm like, bitch, everything in my house is from China. Like, I shop at Walmart. Like. You know what I mean? You get that cheap shit. Like, I be hating the cheap shit because the cheap shit break real fast and I ain't got about two of them. That's the trick, them bastards. They get us every time. But no, it's, it's cool if you know how to shop. And the also thing I tell people is like, when you come here, you gotta come here with a dream. You gotta come up here like, because if you come here with a dream and you come here and work hard at something and, and develop into something, this every day motivates you just to wake up. You just wake up and shit and be seeing shit that you will never see in the mainland. Never, like, I wake up every day, every once in a while, you know what I'll see in Hawaii that I'll never see in Philadelphia? A girl in a bikini. No, that's not happening on the East Coast, dog. No, if you see a girl on the East Coast in a bikini, somebody get her. Like, somebody, oh, man, they done put something in a drink and shit, like, somebody get her. She's not good. It's snowing out here. Why is she in a bikini? Like, oh. But in Hawaii, it's everywhere. Everywhere. I kind of like, I wish we had like an equivalence to women's styles, to men's styles. You know what I'm saying? Like, women can just put they, they have the cleavage. Cleavage. Oh, the cleavage. Oh, yeah. Y'all don't know how we just, it's not even us. It's everybody just instantly, just like, oh, total attention. Like, ooh, just titties. Like, oldest man, youngest man, especially babies. Like, ooh, this is like, mmm, like, it's crazy. I wish we had an equivalent for men. Now, I mean, what do we got that we could pull out and just show in displays for other people? Like, we, nothing. Like, our bank accounts maybe and shit? Like, a, a fat knot of your, I mean, a beer belly. 
Dog, I'm trying. Dick, how's it going? You know what I mean? I be trying. I got the, the dad bod like a motherfucker. Yo, I don't even got kids. That's just fucked up. Like, <laughs> Zam. But yeah, I wish we had an equivalent. I'm thinking the equivalent for men is like, you know how the, the young people nowadays, they sag their pants and shit? We should say, we should show at least like the tip we allowed to. <laughs> Like the first, like a little bit, so you can see if it's skinny, if it's girthy, like is that the whole thing? Like, just a little bit, just a little bit. I just think, I mean, that should be fair, right? Cause ladies, y'all know, y'all done seen this big six foot five guy with muscles everywhere, look like the rock and shit, and then he come out and he's not the rock, he's the worm. <laughs> he's the worm. You know what's fucked up too? Cause women always go for like these high powerful guys the industry and making lots and lots of money. And they, they look for these guys, but those guys got the littlest dicks. That's fucked up. That's nature them. Fuck y'all up. Y'all get to the top. You think Jeff Bezos got a big dick? No. That's why he made his rocket look like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he wish he got a big dick now. Big Jeff Bezos, $202 billion. Like, fuck yeah, go to space. Take all the rich people with you. So we can have some money, motherfucker. Like, how you make that much money delivering shit? Like, for real? And how is the, the US male losing money? Come on, man. Like, I be thinking too much. I smoke good weed. I smoke too much good weed. That's another thing in Hawaii. Best drugs in the world. You <laughs> Best drugs in the world. Best beautiful women. Anything, Hawaii magical too. Hawaii's really magical. Like, you can really sit there and imagine shit in your head that you need and it's gonna pop right in front of you. You're a good person. Like this is a magical place. Like, and it could be you can manifest. It's called manifestation. That's what the hippies call it. <laughs> but they can manifest stuff. And you think about it, and you be good. All of a sudden, what you need right there in front of you. Anything. I was sitting at home, and I got a lot of books. So I was like, I need some shelves for my books. So I'm sitting there. I was, I'm, imagine how to shot. I need a black shelf about this big. I walk outside, fucking exactly what I needed. Black shelf. Like, yo, this is amazing. Like. Fuck, hey, it's exactly how I envisioned it. Put it in my house, I got a bookshelf with all my books right there. I read, niggas can read. <laughs> but no, so then I started like thinking about more complex things. Like, you know what? I want a refrigerator for my drinks. Like, I, don't, I like cold drinks. So I'm thinking about the refrigerator. I go outside to the same corner. I think these are called vortexes. We're like, the same corner be having everything you need if you're just starting off in Hawaii. I found a brand new, well not brand new, slightly used refrigerator right there, perfectly worked to this day, still this, still work. Then one day, well actually I figured out what was really going on. In Hawaii, if you don't pay your rent, they'll throw all your shit outside. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Like, it's just everything you need, just like, oh, like, we have fish bowls, all kind of stuff. You gotta pay your rent. They'll kick you, they'll, everything be outside. <laughs> then, one time, so I'm sitting at home one time, and I was like, my grandma just passed away. I was hurting, so I was like, I miss my grandma. And I was just thinking about my grandma. Then I walk outside. I see this old lady sitting in the trash. Like, just no, she had nowhere to go. Like, she was sitting out there for like three, four days. I mean, that's a big commitment, taking an old woman in, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I sit there, she looked just like my, and then I'm thinking like, who would throw away a perfectly old white woman like this? Like, that's fucked up, so. I got my grandma, she lives in my house like a pet and shit, like, it's cool. She cleans up, she walks around, it's good. Gotta open your heart like that sometimes. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta let the universe use you, like, you got to. I like to do this comedy stuff because like this comedy stuff is just like our pain. Cause each, each one of us got like mad mental problems, if you don't know this. Like we got all kind of anxiety, we got fears, but we just could talk good and we're not afraid to do public speaking. And that's the funny part because we are the ones are the new teachers of the new generation and y'all here gonna be going to school. We got a lot of teachers here tonight, y'all. I want to give it up one more time for yourselves. We're gonna dedicate this show to a dear friend of ours who recently passed away. He was a uh, he was a fan, like he used to come to all the events, come to everything, but he recently passed away. And uh, 
just a couple days ago, so all the comedians know him, so we're gonna dedicate this show to him. But before we start the show, we're just gonna do a little, a moment of silence, because that's what we do in the East Coast, take a little moment of silence to think about them, so if we could just get a couple seconds, moment of silence for Beach Mac, the moped mechanic, y'all. Mahalo Nui Loa, y'all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to start this thing off, ladies and gentlemen, with the guy that's on the poster. You go. It's not going to be here. He's making pizza. Who's going to We got two hosts, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up to warm it up, ladies and gentlemen, I like to make some noise from the big island, ladies and gentlemen. Nehemiah Nehe Polly. Yes, let's start this shit off right. I saw the damn ho ho, so we're gonna start a little musical. I've got ho ho's, ho ho's, cupcakes and snow cones, Twinkies, pies, cakes and donuts and donut holes, donut holes. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I got the motherfucking munchies every day. That's right, it is I, the pastor, free pastor. Almost fucked up that line. See, that's how these open mics is good, man. You practice this shit. So when the pastry comes, I can just be like, I'm the pastor of pastries, the preacher of pies, the bishop of biscottis. And the rabbi of, well, fuck, I don't know what the fuck is a pastry that starts with R. Does anybody know what is a rabbi of ravioli? No, it's not even a pastry, is it? <laughs> Shit. You, I got food on my motherfucking mind more than sex. Like, I love foodgasms more than I love orgasms. And I won't tell you why. Because I always gotta apologize for orgasms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm excited. It's so funny. It's so funny. I don't even know what I feel like Winnie the Pooh, that's why I'm not blessing that regards. What I am blessing is this cute and cuddly body. See, afterwards, and Netflixing and cake. Okay, that's a hashtag Netflix and cake. I don't give a damn about chilling. If you got cake, we cool. You can date me. You, you can send pictures of cake to me that would excite me more than nudes, all right? You can send a picture of you licking cake icing off a bald man's head and that would excite me more than your nudes. Like, these nudes, is, it's like uncomfortable. I don't like this. Because I texted one of my ex girls show me them cakes, and she sent Nick nude pictures. And I was like, that's not what I meant. Like, you don't know me at all. You should know that I love wedding cakes. Because why? Wedding cakes is the best cake on the fucking planet. Because these people spend months, years even, planning the wedding. So you know they gotta get that cake right. That's the best cake to taste. You, you ever get a wedding gig, they're good paying, you can eat, drink if you want to, but you know what I was looking at. The magical cake. There was one wedding I did before COVID, 2019. And the cake was donut shaped. Because the theme of the wedding was The Simpsons. So the dude was Homer, he was marrying Marge. I was like, that's my dream wedding right there. Who the fuck else walks around with a damn Homer Simpson mask? Me. It matches the macadamia and haircut that I have, right? So yeah, that, that thing is like pink frosting. Just, I couldn't concentrate. Like, I got an MC right and I'm bringing up guests and stuff. Like, comedy, this, this is. You, I could be the professor of comedy. I've been doing this shit since 2003 and getting paid, right? You want to get paid, you got to pick up side gigs. Doing Jose show and stuff like that is how you do it. You hand out business cards and you say, hey, you want somebody to MC your wedding. You want somebody, baby's first luau. That kind of shit, that's how you get paid. So this wedding, these guys gave me a thousand dollars, right? Just to fucking chop up shit. I mean, it was like four or five hours. Who the fuck, what job you know four or five hours of just hanging out, eating, and looking at cake will pay you a thousand dollars? Nobody. Nobody in the world. Hey, corporate gig I got before COVID. 
Best Buy. I got to make fun of guys that tucking their polos into their olos, man. Okay? And the corporate, so the corporate ones is the ones, though. They send you a list, like a fucking email, of 10 pages of disclaimer. Like, you cannot say things to offend this, 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 right? Like, the colleges is the worst. They'll tell you all of this. You get to the college and everybody's like, say what the fuck you want, man. It's first amendment or something. It doesn't matter. As long as you make these people laugh and entertain, you get paid. Either way. Yeah, thank you for coming to Comedy 101. I am the Professor of Pastry. <laughs> I don't even know what the list, who's the list, where the list at? That's Tony is, Tony is number one. Mr. Negretti, this is a small story about Tony. I was doing a, he was headlining in Kona for, for us. We had, we had an event in Kona and I was, one of his openers, right? And back then, I was known as Fluffy Stunt Double because I weighed damn near 400 pounds and had bigger breasts than Rick Ross and uh, DJ Khaled Weaver breasts combined, all right? Wow! Look at that thing, it was like, fuck you. Those chests were huge, all right? My chest was freaking, like, bigger than Jessica's, all right? Y'all don't even know. I would have toppled over. So. Tony, he's the headliner, and it's his time to come up. Oh, Anthony yeah. Negrelli! Oh, I shot the shit out of you, Whoa. didn't I? Whoa. I didn't even finish the story. Whoa, I was just talking to Charles. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Hey, yeah, Bodford, Yamaya. Wow. Was it that bad? What's going on in here? Is nobody having fun? What the fuck happened? You're supposed to go to the Hele and get drunk. All right, I know I know he probably didn't put that on the Facebook ad, all right? Paco, from now on, put, it's not even bring your own booze, it's come intoxicated. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're on edibles, we're talking at least a couple, hour 45 minutes to kick in. John, how's that LSD going? <laughs> No one knows where you're at half the time, bro. But you report back to us. I know it seems weird, but every time I talk to John, I do this. I put my hand over my ear like I'm on a radio. John, how is it in space? Sorry we had to get you off of Earth. You were terrifying the humans. We had to send you back to your planet. <laughs> All right, it's crazy. I, I promise I have stuff to talk. What's up, Rohan? Woo, that was a swerve. Where are you guys from, Kaimaki? Oh, okay, California. Shit, I should have, that was my first instinct. I was like, fuck, it's either Kaimaki or California. Both neighborhoods have burritos. <laughs> I don't know why Kamiki is known for that. It's because young people have no time for food preparation. They're like, it's something I can eat while I'm driving. That's what I noticed about California food. I, I lived off of uh, the, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's the pork. Gonna slice it into the taco. Al Pastor. Who said it? You said it. I I loved it. You know what I mean? I just felt like that was my connection in LA. I'm like a pineapple. Oh shit. Oh shit. I didn't know Mexicans fuck with the pineapple. You know what I mean? And then I was like, oh shit. If you like pina colada. Right? And getting caught in pina colada, that's not English. Right? That's you Latin dudes. And then I knew Mexicans were down with adultery. You know what I mean? It's like they wrote a whole song about it. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Mexico. <laughs> they like sex. <laughs> I love that uh, everybody 
I'm gonna try to bridge our cultural gap here. You guys watch Dog the Bounty Hunter? Yeah. <laughs> you did. Oh my god, I loved it. I, I lived in Chicago at the time when it was on, and I'm not even kidding, that show made me homesick. You know what I mean? And it was just about this, uh, this bail bondsman who would catch people who liked smoking crystal meth. You guys remember this? Yeah. It was great. It was great. It was just like, it was, it was always the same episode, you know what I mean? He'd drive up to Wahiwa. All right, I don't know. If you guys want to know where to score some ice, <laughs> take a drive up to central Oahu and get you some methamphetamine, all right? Studying for exams, getting that housework done. Methamphetamine for the productive drug addict. <laughs> I like that drug, you know what I mean? Stoners get this like lazy reputation. Not meth, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'll fucking take all the fucking shit in your lawn. That's hard work. Have you ever tried to sell scrap metal? It's stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's how I know meth heads are hard workers. It's demoralizing. You're like 400 of stainless steel for four dollars? All right, I'm a quarter of a way to an eight ball. Let's do it. <laughs> That's how good meth is, all right? I feel like it's this endless work cycle. The meth gives you the energy to earn the meth. How do you think you could lie to your friends and family all day long? You need that meth energy, right, to keep you going. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Okay. I think we went a little bit hard on the meth. <laughs> I don't know why I was so excited about it. I was like, here's this drug I haven't tried. All right. If anybody, I know I said why you but seriously, if anybody has some available, I'm curious. I know they say not even once. And whoever made that campaign fucked up, because doesn't that make meth sound awesome? What? A drug that you have once and you'll ruin your life? <laughs> right? There's no way! In America nowadays, you can't scare me. A drug so good I'll ruin my life? What's the worst that it can happen? I'll lose my job. I'll lose my friends and family. Then I'm just Mike Rayo. You know what I mean? That's it. That's the bottom. Right, that's another comedian, by the way. I'm just saying. They're all doing really poorly. I could have said any, any one of the names on this list. Could have been an example of how meth actually might improve their situation. <laughs> how long before the vaccines? How long, does anybody know? It was March 2020. When did we start vaccinating uh, people in their 20s? May? May? It took Trey 11 months to write three jokes? This is what I'm saying, people. This is what I'm saying. This is why we need to get rid of welfare. All right? It's not helping them. There's something about living in your car that I think will make you write more jokes. All right? When Trey gets to play Pokemon and watch anime all day, it's three new jokes in 11 months. Okay, so. No one here is pro-Republican after that? Where are your tax dollars going? That is a terrible investment. Everybody here got COVID checks, I know it, me included. I spent 100% of it on Magic the Gathering. <laughs> How does that make any sense? If we were all so screwed, how did I spend what was supposed to be my survival money I feel like people in the 1920s, you know what I mean, or th sorry, 30s, whoa, I went to public school. All right, people in the 1930s, they would have been pissed at us. You know what I mean? Did you guys ever read The Grapes of Wrath? Some 60-year-old. <laughs> it's a 
summary of the book. All right, 60 year old with her dried up boob nursing a child sucking. You know what I mean? Every one of these losers without a job has Netflix. Sorry. I'm just salty because I still have a job. You know what I mean? I have to work. I have to work the whole time during COVID. Thank you guys so much. My name is Tony. Have a great night. All right, let's keep this moving. That was Anthony. And bring up our next performer, a lovely lady named Jess Sakal Rabbit. Or Jess Rabbit, sorry. Give it up for your host. So guys, that was an interesting show, huh? Um, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Jessica, or like you said, Jess Rabbit, with Jess Rabbit Comedy on Instagram. I am sort of new to the comedy scene-ish. Close to a year now, but you may have seen me on other things like Naked and Afraid, Pranked, or Sex Sent Me to the ER. Uh, maybe that's a small kind lie. Just a small kind lie. That's just a description of my everyday life on the regular. And people tend to tell me it might be my fault. I argue with that. Nothing is ever my fault. Ever. See, she knows, right? It's Rohan's fault because he's sitting up front. It's always the boy's fault. Never mind. But you know, it made me do a lot of self-evaluation. What of these situations are my fault? And then I got to thinking, I was like, you know, my life has given me some interesting nicknames, so that's going to help me do my self-evaluation. My nicknames. Well, you're about to see one of them. Queen of accidental happenings. Y'all about seeing that shit happen in front of you. Yes. I know, right? It, believe it or not, it happens. And then it's you again. We'll talk about that one later. And probably my personal favorite. Boner killer. Exactly. See, he about choked right there. I don't believe that one either. I think it's quite the opposite. But, you know self-evaluation here so I'm thinking about these and I'm like hmm accidents what accidents have I had happen wait a minute no not my fault I'm going through and I keep checking up on that no not my fault okay maybe slightly my fault okay maybe a lot my fault this one you know but in my defense it was really dark until the blue light comes on this situation I have a friend who dares me Flash the next oncoming car. I think it's never gonna happen, it's late night. And all of a sudden, damn it, headlights gone. So I have to do it, right? And just as I do it, blue light. I still don't think that's my fault. It's his fault for betting me to do it, right? The cop didn't like that answer. I was like, it was the midget's fault. I swear he dared me to do it. Ma'am, how much have you had to drink? I have not drank at all tonight. Really? Are you doing some drugs? I don't purposely do drugs, officer. And then he's like, you know, ma'am, I think we need to get your hands out here. We need to cuff you. I'm like, as I'm going to put my hands up for the cuffs, he is laughing his ass off because the naked midget is coming around the corner. I'm like, I told you it was a midget. So technically not my fault. It was a man's fault, I'm just saying. So, more self-evaluation, you know, that's my naked and afraid I'm going to jail moment. So really, that one was not me. But what other kind of accidental happenings are not my fault? Mm, the time I sent my ex to the ER, that was not my fault. How was I supposed to know that swinging testicles would look like a toy to the cat? I didn't know this. No, see? I've warned you, now you know this. Like, see, I've, I've even warned men on this stuff. I didn't know it, apparently men don't know it either. Lesson learned, right? It was okay, I think we could have worked through it, except when I got to the ER, and the nurse, she looks around and she sees me and she does this and she goes, oh, it's you again. I was like, uh-oh. In my defense, the other times were not my fault either. 
but he was a little bit upset about that, so that was over. You know, but not all accidents are bad. I don't think they are. It's like the time that I accidentally busted a drug ring. I work in healthcare, right? And um, I just so happened to see that somebody was smuggling some drugs in through the healthcare facility, right? I get in trouble. Well, I'm not really in trouble. I get, yes, I get this really, really crappy nickname. All the old fuckers at the nursing home kept calling me boner killer. I was like, no, Grandpa. I just love you enough. I didn't want you to die from all the sex in the blue pills. Just saying, you know. Blue pills, sex. I'm screwed in the head now because I had to see it. I walked in and found that. You don't want to see Grandma and Grandpa having sex. You need therapy. See, my therapy's right here. You could do it. I'm telling you, he wasn't joking. Like, Paco, I don't know what's up with this thing, but it's going to move because we're going to have an accidental happening if it doesn't move. Yeah, we don't want to do it on purpose. You know, like, right over. I know, it wouldn't be my fault. It'd be Paco's fault. He'd be like, I knew it wasn't my fault at all. Total man fault. But, you know, as you can hear, I'm not from here. I've lived in Hawaii for years, but I'm from South Carolina. So, Southern Girl gets inducted into Hawaii living by learning some foreign languages. Not the foreign languages you might think. I got inducted with pigeon. Do you know what pigeon is? Pigeon is like slang, but local slang. Special kind local slang. And uh, my first induction, I was in my office, and we're gonna pretend you're my patient. I walk in, hello sir, how can I help you? Local guy looks at me, he says, it's my opole. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what this word is. How do you play this off, Jessica? What's wrong with it? And he smiles a little bit, and he goes, they want puka. Another foreign word I don't know. So I don't know what to do, and I'm like, okay, play this off, just play this off, play this off. What's wrong with it? Let me see it, show me. And bam, he drops his pants. Um, you know, the, the moral of this story is never ask anybody to show you. And if you don't know what it is, just go ahead and admit it, it's okay. But. Just in case you don't know, Okole is butt, and Puka is hole. Yeah, I know this now. He had a butthole. I found that out the hard way. Like, you know, tell me if you're gonna show me your butthole because I need to go by my rules. I have new rules in my office. If it's before 9 a.m., there is no Okole, Nani, or Boto. You can figure out what the other two are. They're male and female parts. It's like, no, 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 not before 9 a.m. Especially not by surprise, right? What other words should you know? Ah, Tuesday's coming around the corner. Taco Tuesday's coming up, right? So, if anybody ever looks at you and says, like taco, don't say yes. Don't say yes, because I did. I was like, fuck oh, yes, I like tacos. Who doesn't like tacos? And guy brings me out a plate. I looked and all I could think is, oh my God, there was tentacles on the plate. Here, taco with a K, it, yes, exactly, you know, it's squid. No, no, I don't realize he's continuing to fuck with me a little bit more. And it looks like the stuff is moving. So I pick up the chopsticks and I poke it. And I'm like, oh God, it looks like it's moving some more. <laughs> Stabbing it a little bit and he goes, oh, sis, no like poke? I was like, no, I just poked the fuck out of that. I poked it a lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he could have gotten hurt by that, but, like, if they say like, they're not asking you, do you like, do you want? And taco, clarify, is it with a K? Taco, taco, they sound the same until they walk out with it. Yeah, I know this one. But that's probably not the most interesting finding that I had. Don't try this at home. And don't try this with any of the girls because well, I don't know here, they might say yes. Um, if somebody comes up to you and you're a, well, it, it can work both ways, I guess. Like, oof. Every, see, she knows exactly what it is. I didn't know what that meant for like six months. What would the word oof mean in one of your, like, what would you think? What is it? 
opaque paint. And, and the other one is, like, I heard in, was it Roblox? Like, when they die, they say that. I'm like, okay, I'm thinking all this stuff. I don't realize that here it means, do you want to have sex? I was like, well, I might have said yes had I known. I did not know. So don't, do not use that line on girls. Not a good line because you might get something you don't want. Okay, you would really get something you don't want here. Like, yeah. But I had all kind of wonderful introduction into pigeon, which is cool because, you know, at least it didn't kill me and I learned a little bit. Until I thought I was gonna die and get lost because um, they wouldn't give me directions. Back home, directions is over yonder, down by the church, you know, something, something like that. Here, it's it's on the Maka side. Makai, favorite. It's by Dekine. What the fuck is Dekine? They don't even know what Dekine is. No, exactly, they don't. So. I figured out that the kind is anything that they can't think of the name. After I drove for like two hours trying to find the kind and asking people in the store, where's the kind at? I look like a total idiot. There, okay, it would have been better had I said the kind, like the kind donuts, because those are fucking awesome. I know we brought them to him. Oh, if you haven't had them, try the kind donuts. Oh. That's gonna make our, our uh, host up here really happy if you talk about his decaying donuts. So, as I'm talking about donuts, we will bring up the donut master. We'll have him come up here and talk about his pastries and do his thing. Give it up for your host. Yeah, give it up for Jess Rabbit one more time. All right, of course, we have to do a few moments. Moments of humor and a time of the pandemic. The pandemic. And the Delta virus. The Delta variant. We need fucking vaccination by Chuck Norris. Chuck fucking Norris. Operation Delta Vac or some shit like that. I don't know. What the fuck? We just injected into people's testicles. Oh, everything went like what shriveled? No. Shriveled. Pruny. No. Fuck that. If, what would it what if they told you you had to get the vaccination in your each testicle you had to take one shot of the vaccination in each testicle what would happen holy shit i would ask um so does it enlarge the penis is that one of the side effects can, can that be one of the side effects for vaccination i would like the mag light special please the minotaur if you will right like i would like to have that half of the horse so I can just poop anywhere I want to. Just trotting and pooping at the same time, like really? You didn't even have to wipe your ass. Probably that's what the tail is for for the horse, right? The tail just flaps in the back and wipes his ass at the same time. That is fucking awesome. That is awesome. But just my luck, that freaking thing would turn my half into a burro, a donkey, a jackass. Half jackass, half human, like really? That fucking sucks. Now my only ability is carrying heavy things at a very slow pace. What the fuck is different from now? Like that? That's what I used to do at 500 pounds. Like Jesus. <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah, man. I, my mother once threatened me. She's like, you're 500? I'm gonna put you on the mic. 600 pound life. And I was like, fuck that. I saw the episodes of my 600 pound life and they was raising up people's titties and washing them and stuff like that. Holy crap! No ways! I got to do something about this. Hell no. I remember the first time I got to this freaking King's Pizza. Like, Erica Schwarzkopf, aptly named German, she a freaking online harassed me into coming to this pizza joint because I had been doing comedy for, for fucking years before coming here. I was getting paid for the shit. Why the fuck would I take time to go to an open mic? Especially by some crazy white lady that looks like a Karen, like fuck that. I've been, the police has been called on me several times. You're not fooling me, Erica Schwarzkopf. Like, come on. <laughs> fuck that, right? Because I had never met this lady in person. She's only been online. So finally, she freaking get, gets me to come here. So I came in my Pepto-Bismol bottle, sat in the front row, Mr. Chuck Wilde was the fucking host that night. It was 
It was fucking good. I just came on, talk, told jokes, made friggin' Chuck Wild choke, you know, some laughter. And ever since then, I've been coming back to this King's Pizza because of their fucking pizzas. Their pizzas are amazing. That Papa Hulu with extra jalapenos, it'll make your asshole fire out. And luckily, you get to shoot fireballs into a toilet afterwards, right? It's awesome. <laughs> You should have seen me with my Mario hat during Halloween. It's a me, Mario. I shoot fireballs out of my asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what he does. You guys just don't see it. It's quick this way. He pulls the asshole fireball and then he throws it from this angle. You see? That's what happens when you take those mushrooms, see? Like mushroom. That's a fucking cool name. That's a cool nickname. Like, what is my nickname, right? Some drunk lady said that I look like The Rock and I was like, no, no, no. It's impossible. The Rock is taller. And he has a rock six pack. Nehemiah, his nickname is the Cinnabon Bowl. <laughs> this is a hairy, giant donut right here. You really literally are what you eat, ladies and gentlemen. And I didn't want to be a fruit or a vegetable. I ended up looking like a giant donut with a macadamia nut topping. All right? Which is cool, fuck, hey, whatever floats your boat, right? I look in the mirror and go, damn, I fucking do look like it. I want a macadamia nut top donut now. Right? It's awesome. I tried a lily koi donut with coconut sprinkles. Holy Moses. It's a religious experience when you have a good donut melt in your mouth, you know? And it goes, like South, you just banana cream pie yourself. Just, I'm just doing that thinking about it. I'm like, no. Luckily, I got black pants on, right? I'm full of Twinkie cream this one, so. It's my excuse for not getting anybody pregnant. I can't. I'm full of Twinkie cream, that's why. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> Holy shit, no. He just equated Twinkie cream to semen, really? What is that about? It probably is true because I've eaten so much sugar. I thought it would be fucking yellow, like a Twinkie or like the Simpson character, right? Like, that's probably why he is yellow like that. It's probably that. Is it jaundice? I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. But I do have one gift, and that's of gab. I'm freaking blabbing and gabbing, and you guys are wondering, what the fuck? Why is he not introducing the next comic? Because we have a hidden agenda, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to do a candlelight vigil. And it's going to be somber. I'm going to give it back to Papa Local right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you please oblige us, we thank you for the people, the fans, for y'all. And what we're going to do is celebrate one of our fans who just passed away. So comedians, please come in here, find a seat. We're just going to have a small candlelight visual. No, it's out there. The wind's going to blow it out. It's in here. It's not no cult, no religion shit. I already know y'all scared of shit. <laughs> we got some candles. We're going to pass it around, though. The fans blow them off. Turn off the fans. I feel like I should be singing this song, but. If we could just have the community come together, we got like. You still got the Corona, John C. Nobody can sit next to you. <laughs> we got five seats in front. We need everybody to come close in. I'm a comedian. I gotta laugh because I don't want to cry. That's why we do this, y'all. Don't we got apps for this now, y'all? <laughs> We're going to pray to our God, Molik. No. <laughs> Look into it. It's spooky. So good. Can't do it. Speed out. So you can't do it because you know. It's 
spooky. It is spooky. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, we gotta come together sometimes as a community sometimes because. Like, if one of us gets hurt, we all get hurt. Like, I really believe in that a whole lot. And even though Matt was a fan, like, this is the whole reason why we do this. Like, Matt was here all the time, just with a big smile. Just when no, when none of y'all was here, he was right here in front of me, just crying, dying, laughing to our jokes. And uh, I'm going to bring up in a few minutes, this guy, uh, he loves everybody, yo. He loves everybody. And he just really took Matt in. It was one of Matt's best friends and knew all about Matt. Way more than I did, because he sat there and spent time with him, lots of time with him. So would you please give a warm round of applause to the next performer, Rohan Riders. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I don't, I don't want to start a fire. I did that when I was like, five years old and ever since then I've had a fear of these things. Oh my god. And it's hot. Stay away from fire. Yeah, I know I just okay. I know there's like a difference between somber, sarcastic and asshole. And I'm just gonna go asshole. Matt was a dick, okay? He was a fucking dick and I wish we could have roasted him while he was still alive, man. He would have loved it too, you know? If you guys ever met Matt, man, fucking he loved telling shit about people all the time. I almost got in a fight with him. Fucking the first time, yeah, that's, that's more than one. The first time I almost got in a fight with him was when I asked him to come on stage, do some comedy, because he fucking works hard next door. It's like, dude, it's already nine o'clock and you're still working? Come over to do some comedy. And he's like, hold on, after I finish this Heineken. <laughs> Fucking loved Heineken. <laughs> Crazy. He'd be like, you don't want Heineken, bro? And I'd be like, nah, bro, I, I only drink the hard liquor. Anyone got some hard liquor? <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, does anyone have some hard liquor? I'm, no. No vodka. Fireball. He liked Fireball, I guess. It was fucking great. He'd be like, hold on, bro, hold on, bro. Got the fireball, bro. What do you think, bro? Man, he was, a, uh, I swear to God, one of the loveliest individuals that I've ever come in contact with in my life. And that makes me sound like an alien. Like, first contact? No, not that kind of thing. In fact, um, I'm not gay. He is definitely not gay. Um, we both have been to jail. I know this because the first time that I convinced him to come on stage, he was trying to holla. Why are you just in my set, bro? <laughs> Fucking it up. First time that I came, got him to come on stage. He's like talking to some shorty over. She was sitting over there at the time. This was a whole different setup. But so, at the time, and she was like, hey, what's up, bro? What's up, shorty? You know, he was over here, and I went. Because I was kind of doing like, yeah. Good job, bro. Like, cause I play sports, you know. So I was like, yeah, that's the good, good job thing. Slap ass if you watch Kim Bill. And he just flipped the fuck out. Hell, what the fuck you doing, bro? I've been in jail, bro. I don't give a fuck who you are, bro. We go, we go, we about to throw blows. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's like, nah, nah. And he walked out. And he went back over to the moped shop where he works. And uh, at that time, this whole thing was passed out. So I was sitting over in the corner. I was so scared that this nigga was gonna come and shake me that I jumped out of the window, the order window. And I went and I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. And he's like, oh, we cool, we cool, bro, we cool. And so ever since then, me and Matt was real cool. And uh, the most, wonderful experience I had with him was playing Excite Bite outside on the moped when the police pulled up. And I'll have to tell you about that story later, man. I miss you, Matt. I don't wanna, like, yep, that's all. Thank you.
Yeah, we laugh because we don't want to cry. You're failing, Rohan. Hold it in. But like my grand, my mom used to tell me that shit all the time. Hold it in. Like, all right. No, thank you so much. Now we all here, dog. It, hug, it explains a lot, dog. Dog, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He comes out at the wrong time. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, I, when it'd be a proud moment and shit, and I just start holding. <laughs> you mean like, what's the matter? Nothing. But no. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have a rare next performer. She's not performer, she's got a couple words to say. This woman is the real reason why we all here. She rarely comes to say something. She gonna say something tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Mushroom Monroe. Thank you guys so much. And I'm so happy you guys came to do this candle lighting because I'm not pretty much right here. Um, he was a really, really, really sweet guy. That, that's why he did what he did. He didn't want to hurt the other person he was upset at. He just, he just hurt himself. Um, but we had a, you know, we, Eight years, he was here, I was here six years, and that. It's a really funny story, I went downstairs, and we only had one sign on the bathroom, and he was on the toilet taking a dump. I go, Matt, you have a, there's a men's bathroom. And he goes, why are you looking at me? I go, what do you mean, there's a men's bathroom? He goes, why are you looking at me? I go, I have brothers, I have a son. I don't care about guys shitting in front of me. And he goes, stop, I go, close the door, Matt, just close the door. And, and that was the, uh, Probably the only fight we argued we've ever had. He was a really, really sweet, caring, gentle guy. Thank you guys. Marshmallow Monroe, y'all. All right, y'all. Just one, two, three. Everybody, blow out your candles on three. Ready? Make a wish. Make a good wish. Put some good vibes out there for the universe. One, two, three. Make Yay! a wish. Yeah. All right, y'all. We're going to try to keep. Thank y'all for the visitors that's here from California. We appreciate y'all. Everybody else is just here, rotten ass comedians and shit. Um, I see you, I see y'all. But no, we're gonna, uh, I would like to bring back to the regularly scheduled program, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Nehemiah Nehepali! Damn. I just said. Uh, this next performer, would it be cool if she was a judge? And I get to introduce her as Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> 